So play. you're not pitching forward, you're just releasing the back that, pitcher. Yeah, that's right, because that's okay. all it takes to get out of the stall here. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back to the Finer Points. In this video I'm going to show you three exercises that I'm using to kind of polish the skills of a new student. Um, this is somebody that's working with a different primary instructor. He's waiting on a medical issue so he can't yet solo but uh, he wants to kind of move on in the training and sort of you know get as good as he can because once the solo happens and the time builds he'd like to move through the check ride as soon as possible. Um, and so I noticed some very common mistakes uh, when we first started flying together. He was leveling off with power, not using rudder effectively, a little bit too much inside the airplane. Uh, so in this video I'm going to show you three exercises that we do here on our second flight that I believe are really going to sort of take him to the gym and bring his game up a notch. So the goal of the lesson is to get him, you know, better feel with the airplane and so we started simply by covering up the flight instruments and you'll notice I just sort of skewer one single piece of paper on the attitude indicator knob so that he can uh, peel it back and reference the other data if he needs to, the airspeed, the altitude, the vertical speed, heading. Um, but in this case we just covered up the flight instruments for the first takeoff so he could really tune into the airplane, simplify everything, feel the wing when it's ready to fly, and maybe do something that he's never done with his primary flight instructor. Um, but something that will bring him a little closer to connecting with the machine. Okay, so normally I would look at the heading indicator That's and fine. make I'll sure that we're at 3-0. Okay. Perfect. We'll look at the compass okay. today. A little more right rudder there, fight Power for the center. Set. Poles are green. Good. Airspeed's coming alive. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> You'll feel it when it's ready to fly. You can just kind of feel the elevator come to life and then set it at a climb pitch attitude. Just pull back a little bit. A little uh, bit. Think little, now. Pull back a little bit. There you go. You're flying right rudder. Right, right. Good. And then go right to your Lindbergh reference if okay. you lose the horizon over the nose. There's plenty of data out there. Perfect, just like that. Next, on the upwind, I had him just focus on the Lindbergh reference and start guessing at sight pictures. You know, I asked him, when you know when we get to the VY sight picture, you tell me when you think you're there and we'll check it. And it doesn't matter if he's exactly perfect yet, especially now, um, but what's important is that he's looking at the sight picture as the primary thing and then measuring the data second and that that process is fundamentally ingrained. And then here'll be a fun game. Pitch up until you think we're at your best rate of climb pitch attitude. Just tell me when you think we're there. Uh, probably like here? Yeah, it's pretty darn close. Why don't you check it? Yeah, 70. So, so 74 is your best rate. So maybe best just down down a little bit. Good. Yep. Good, and that's the way we want to sort of fly is set those pictures first. Okay. And then check the instruments second. So after we left the airport area, we did our first flow check checklist. Uh, and then we just let go of the yoke and started experimenting with flying the airplane simply with his feet. Again, not that I suggest he flies this way, right? Your backseat passengers would get crazy nauseous. But just to connect with the machine and to make sure that he understands the secondary effect of the rudder controls. Cool. Now if we can, let's trim it up so you can just fly yep. with your right foot. Perfect. Yeah, just all the way off. And for the purposes of this sort of gym exercise too, if, if a wing were to, to fall, just pick it up with your feet. Don't worry about yeah, using aileron. Frequency change approved. Frequency change approved. 996 for me alpha. Have you ever done that with the rudders? No. So here, watch. Looking, looking at your Lindbergh reference. Okay. Let's, we could turn left by just letting go oh, of right yeah, rudder. Good, good, and right. then using right rudder to stop it. And if you stab at the right rudder a little, it'll bring that left wing up. See that? Uh, yeah. You don't need to touch the yoke even. Got it. Because the secondary effect of yaw is roll. If you swing that wing through the air, it will lift. If you add, add more okay. airflow to it, right? Down in the practice area, we started with, with MCA, minimum controllable airspeed, and worked directly into stall exercises. All right, sweet. Now, what if I asked you to slow down to that minimum controllable airspeed? So just slow down until you hear the stall horn. So I'm going to pull the power, and I'm going to... I'll pull the power and pitch up. Yeah, good. And, like, and do it kind of like... Simultaneously? Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Alright, nice. Maybe you can trim it so that you're essentially hand. Good. How's that feeling? Good. Good. All right, and then the way you know if you have enough power in slow flight is, you know, if you're doing this little 50 foot per minute descent, that's the most yep. common error, right? So bring in power just until that stops. Good, but don't stare at that. Look at your Lindbergh reference so you can control the plane about right there. So we'll call it 1800. All right, sweet. This is minimum controllable airspeed again. I can't remember if you and I did stall exercises last time or we just oh, talked about we, them. We just talked about them. Okay. Um, let me show you one real quick, all right? Okay. So I got the airplane. Got the airplane? Yeah, and we're not really going to do the whole stall procedure. This is a gym exercise. We're just doing reps here. This is okay. like skill building, right? So I want you to just look at your Lindbergh reference. I'm going to turn you away from the sun a little bit so that we have a better horizon. Something like that, right? Okay. Now, looking at your Lindbergh reference, the point here is to just slowly increase the back pressure and, and right rudder. So you know what? If I let go of right rudder, it looks like yep. that, right? So I don't want any of that. And then I just pull the airplane into a gentle stall. And as soon as the stall happens, I release the back pressure, but not a, not a, not a ton, just enough to, let's see here, there's the, there's the stall, and then I release. Now I'm flying again. Right back into MCA, right? So I'm just, it's real gentle. But it's just to feel like what the stall actually feels so like. You're not pitching forward, you're just releasing the back that, pressure. Yeah, that's right, because that's all it takes to get out of the stall here. So I will... I'll even call out that buffet. I'll say, there's the tail buffet. There it is, there's the stall. Release the pressure, I'm, falling, I'm start flying again. All right, so just try a couple of those. Okay. And it's all about looking at the Lindbergh reference and making sure there's no yaw going on out there. Okay. And just being real gentle. You won't need the power. Good, nice rudder input there. Give it a good little pull there to make it happen. Once you're at this point, it's sort of screaming at you. There it is, good. Rudder, so if that wing falls, that means you just didn't have quite enough right rudder. So I let go of the rudder because in the Lindbergh reference, it looked like I was banking right. Yeah, I mean, uh, just word to the wise, when you are when you have power in there and you're real slow, it's like next to impossible to spin to the right. Okay, okay. So everything about it, the aerodynamics here is pulling you left. Okay. So air on the side of, I've got slightly too much right rudder, you'll never go wrong. Okay, okay. But yeah, just play with that until that feels comfortable. There you go, good. And see how quickly you're flying again yeah. once you release that back pressure? Good. More right rudder there. And so... This reinforces a few things. One is the recovery of a stall is about releasing the yoke. It's not about not adding about, power. Okay. Power actually pulls you left. Like so, adding power is you know will minimize your altitude loss, but it'll also it'll yank you to the left. left. Okay. Yeah. Do one more of those, and like as we get close to the stall, show me where you're looking. Like just touch the window where you're. Good. Perfect. Good. There it is. Kind of now you're like in that stall. Good. Cool. Is that interesting? Is like hopefully yeah. getting you yeah. more familiar with like, what it does. Yeah. All in all, that's a pretty good gym day for my new student, Jeremy. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Please go out and practice some of that with your instructor. Just make sure that you've got the fundamental skills. It might seem for a moment like you're sidestepping the stuff that's important, you know, practicing the maneuvers and all of that. But if you have the things that we've covered here drilled in, that that's your, you know, fundamentally ingrained in the way you fly, it'll make everything else downstream seem easy and move much, much faster. All right, aviators, that's all for this video. If you haven't gotten your free three-day trial of the Ground School app, definitely check it out. Much of the stuff you've seen in this video today is all in the app and much, much more. Also, there's a free gift video available at learnthefinerpoints.com. Um, tons of bonus content going to Patreon weekly. Uh, huge thanks to the patrons. We've got another hangout coming up next Friday. We do one every single month. Um, so if you haven't seen that, check out patreon.com learntfp. 
Remember also that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select Pilot Protection Services. A huge thanks to ForeFlight and Bose, and of course you, the best fans on the internet for watching this video. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share with your friends, talk about it everywhere you go, but most importantly, until we see each other again, be safe and fly your best.